Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror mystery film, No Man's Land, The Rise of Reeker. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins on a highway located in the so-called Death Valley in the year 1978. The place is in the middle of nowhere and rarely inhabited. An infamous killer in Death Valley, known as the Drifter, is driving along the desolate highway. A thirsty man stops him, asking for a ride. The thirsty man warns him about the infamous killer roaming around. Unbeknownst to the man, the driver is the killer. He drives away, so the man continues walking around. He then drives in reverse, forcefully hitting the man. As a result, the man gets seriously injured and is unable to move. He drives forward again, and now his car squeezes the helpless man's lower body into mashed potato. He walks out of the car and brings out his tools. He looks up and appears to be talking to someone. He then cuts the man's tongue, making blood splatter around his wheel mags. After that, he leaves the man to die. As he's driving, he throws away the blood mags, and a police officer named Reed picks them up. Upon seeing the blood in it, Reed recognizes that it must be from the drifter. So he follows the drifter's car until they reach the drifter's hideout. The place is filled with rotting body parts, and as a result, it reeks of a shit smell. Just then, Reed reveals himself and instantly arrests the drifter. He puts the drifter in chains, and he gets aware of the disgusting rotting body parts in the hideout. He cannot take it anymore, so he walks out for a while and calls for a backup. The drifter then cuts his hormone let go arm using the hacksaw to free himself from the chains. The drifter attempts to fight back against Reed, and he manages to get Reed's gun. But it appears that a voice instructs the drifter not to fight back. The drifter then surrenders to Reed, declaring that the voice told him that his work is already done. Reed arrests him, and a psychiatrist talks to him. The drifter reveals to the psychiatrist that he does not kill people for enjoyment. He claims that he kills people to serve the voice. The psychiatrist thinks that his statement is bullshit. In the end, the drifter is sentenced to death through chemical gas, and Reed is promoted as a sheriff for arresting him. After his death, the drifter reincarnates somewhere as a supernatural creature called the Reeker. The Reeker claims the lives of those humans who are destined to die but try to resist death. Several years later, Reed is eating the diner in Death Valley with his officer son, Harris. He is still the sheriff, and he is about to retire. A doctor, who stops by in the diner, greets him. As they are busy eating, the newly employed waitress serves them hot coffee. After that, the waitress cleans the clogged diner toilet. She's in disgust after a bloody shirt appears to clog the toilet. The owners say that it's usual, claiming they found a shoe with a foot in the toilet. Meanwhile, a group of criminals, Baldy, Alex, and their injured friend, stop by the diner after robbing a casino. Alex plans to seek help from his ex-girlfriend, who now serves as a waitress in the diner. So Alex leaves their injured friend inside their car and sneaks inside the diner. He tells his ex-girlfriend waitress that he will lead his injured friend there, and he instructs her to call 911 for his injured friend. Inside, Reed and Harris see the news about the three criminals who robbed the casino. As they walk out of the diner, Reed notices fresh blood on the ground, and he immediately gets suspicious of it. Reed asks the criminals on radio, and it reports to him that one of the criminals is bald. Reed immediately thinks that Baldy must be one of them, so he calls for backup. Alex sees Reed and Harris observing Baldy's bald head, so he reports it to him. As Baldy recognizes the two, Harris attempts to arrest him. He shoots back at Reed, but Reed manages to dodge it. He drops the fuel gun, making it leak on the ground. He then gets inside the car to escape, but the key is nowhere to be found. As a result, Harris manages to arrest him. Alex then walks out and takes the waitress hostage. He instructs Harris to surrender his gun, leaving Harris no choice but to give it to Baldy. The doctor walks out, offering the criminals to help their injured friend. Right then, the leaking fuel gets lit up, so the criminals with the waitress immediately run away. Meanwhile, Harris tries to save the injured criminal inside. Unfortunately, he fails to do so as the fuel fire explodes. He gets hurt by the explosion, but he manages to survive. After the explosion, Balby shoots at Reed, and they exchange some shots as hatred, not the gift. The doctor runs toward Harris to give him medical help. Strangely enough, the ground suddenly shakes as Balby, Alex, and the waitress run away. Reed calls for backup, but there is no signal in their area. Meanwhile, Baldy forces the waitress to give her car keys to them, and Alex escorts the waitress to get her car keys, so they can use her car to escape. They sneak back to the diner, and the waitress wonders why the owner is gone. The waitress gets her car key, but Alex shouts at her, so she decides to flush it into the toilet. Outside, Reed, Harris, and the doctor notice a bad rotting smell. 
The doctor says that a bad smell is a warning of danger nearby. Harris checks the explosion site, and he's baffled why the injured criminal's body is gone from the car. In the meantime, Baldy attempts to shoot the waitress for throwing out the keys. In response, Alex promises Baldy that he will find the key in the septic tank. Alex comes to the septic tank. He swims along the smelly shits to search for the key. As Alex cannot find the car key, but just the shit, the waitress finally reveals that she tricked Alex, and she had the car key all along. She then hands it over to him. Outside, Baldy holds the doctor hostage, and Reed and Harris respond. Just then, they see an old man's heart come out of his body and eventually die. They are baffled as to who did that to the old man. As they are busy talking, Baldy drives away with Alex to escape. Meanwhile, Harris proceeds to walk to the desert to find help. The doctor checks the old man, and she recognizes the old man to be a patient. Apparently, the old man was scheduled for surgery that day, and he was not expected to survive. After that, Reed, the doctor, and the waitress stay inside the diner. A missing person suddenly shows up, claiming that there is an incoming danger. After he gets weapons in the diner, he proceeds to leave. Outside, Harris continues along the desert, until an invisible barrier stops him from leaving. He tries to move to the other side, but it seems that the invisible barrier covers their area. He shoots at it, and the bullet ricochets back. In the meantime, Baldy forces Alex to get out of the car, so he can have all the money. Baldy then hits the invisible barrier, and as a result, the car crashes. Due to the impact, his head gets cut in half right in the bald part. But weirdly enough, he is still alive and manages to walk out of the car. Alex sees him walking with a half-bald head and gets completely disgusted to see his shitty face. Alex inspects the invisible barrier, realizing that there is no way out. He covers Baldy's head with plastic and walks away. On the other side, Harris continues to wander around until he finds a small cabin. He takes a peek at it, and he sees the Reeker torturing the missing man to death. He then runs away out of disgust and fear. Later, Alex and Baldy are walking around, when their money suddenly gets set on fire. To save the burning money, Alex and Baldy pee at the money. Their injured friend suddenly appears, warning them about the Reeker who's chasing him. Their injured friend then runs his injured ass away. Back at the diner, the doctor finds the tools of the missing man. She thinks that there's an evil force lurking around. Harris arrives and agrees with her. He reports the invisible wall to them. The doctor reads the book, and it declares the smell of rotten flesh is a sign that the Reeker is arriving. Outside, the Reeker arrives and burns Baldy to death, using the flamethrower. His memories then flash back as he faces death. After witnessing it, Alex runs back to the diner, informing Harris about the Reeker. Reed does not trust Alex, so he proceeds to arrest him. The doctor checks Alex, and she finds Alex's vital signs indicate that he's already dead. They put Alex in the car, and Harris guards him. Later, Harris hears someone screaming for help in the motel. He runs towards there, only to find a leg behind the curtain. To his surprise, the leg does not have an upper body and manages to run away. He then finds the head in the bed talking to him. Right then, the Reeker arrives and abducts him. Inside the diner, Reed hears a voice, and it turns out to be coming from a vocal organ. It declares that everyone has to die. Reed then smashes it with the broom. Outside, the Reeker throws Harris into the car, making him fall to the ground. The doctor arrives and helps him out, but the Reeker appears behind her and rips a hole out of her greasy stomach, leading to her gruesome death. Reed walks out and sees the familiar face of the Reeker. He immediately recognizes the Reeker as the infamous Drifter. So later, he listens to Drifter's testimony. He then remembers that the Reeker might be working for death to claim the lives of humans who are supposed to die but do not want to die. Harry's says that they need to destroy the Reeker before it can claim their lives. They free Alex and plan to create an explosive in joint efforts. Meanwhile, Reed secretly puts a grenade to himself. He walks outside and reveals to Harris that he lived a life that he had never heard of. He says that he never caught the Drifter, and he does not deserve to be called a hero. He then walks away with sadness in his eyes. Apparently, he plans to sacrifice himself to kill the Reeker. He comes to the Reeker's hideout, and the Reeker immediately takes him. The Reeker then puts him on the table and drills a hole in his head, leading to his painful death. The grenade in his body explodes, but the Reeker has already left the hideout. Back to the fuel tank, Alex and the waitress are busy preparing the explosive. Suddenly, Harris feels sick and passes out of nowhere. The two just leave him there. In the morning, Alex and the waitress are still waiting in front of the fuel tank. A car suddenly passes by, and the waitress attempts to stop it. But the car just passes through the waitress's body. Suddenly, the Reeker appears in front of them. 
The Reeker attacks the waitress and proceeds to attack Alex next. As the Reeker walks toward him, he immediately activates the explosive, but it's taking a bit longer to explode. The Reeker attempts to end Alex's life. So instead of running away, the waitress calls the Reeker's attention to save his life. As the Reeker walks toward the waitress, Alex grabs the lamp and throws it into the fuel tank. It instantly explodes and kills the Reeker. Alex runs to the waitress and shields her from the explosion, which leads to his own death. The police and the medic arrive at the scene, and they find Harris and the waitress to be the only survivor. They also find the dead bodies of Reed, Alex, Baldy, the injured friend, and the doctor at the explosion scene. It is then revealed that they all died during the shootout and the explosion in the hostage scene in the beginning, but they try to resist death, and they are all placed in the dimension between life and death. Their Harris and the waitress just caught up with them, but when the dimension ends, they no longer have the memory of that dimension. It turns out, the Reeker killed them in that dimension exactly how they died in real life. For instance, Baldy dies in the explosion, so the Reeker burns him to death. Reed gets shot in the forehead in real life, so the Reeker drills a hole in his forehead. The doctor died after being hit by explosion debris in the stomach, so Reeker put a hole in her stomach. Alex died from protecting the waitress from the explosion in real life, so it exactly happened in that dimension. The movie ends with a young kid playing games in his home. His father arrives, asking him where the babysitter is. The young kid says that there's a voice telling him what to do with her. The young kid then says that the babysitter is exercising. This prompts the father to check the babysitter in the other room. There he finds the babysitter lying in a chair, and there are sharp tools on the ground. In the end, the father checks her, revealing her to be already dead and possibly murdered by the young kid. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.